From the north side of the San Francisco Bay to Singapore, welcome to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio with your host, business owner, lecturer, author, master trainer, Tiaja, with over 30 years of experience in the health and fitness industry. He will challenge the fitness between your ears. So prepare your mind, body, and soul for the revolution of self-care, the evolution of fit, with real talk about real people, real health, real fitness, and the real deal behind our present illness culture. Real talk every time, all the time. Get weekly insights on how to shift your thinking, emoting, eating, training, hydrating, goal setting, and resting for you, the everyday athlete. You can cheat your fitness, but you can't steal your health flow. It's Tuesday, 9 a.m. Let's flow. Welcome to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio, where we challenge the fitness between your ears. I'm your host, Tiaja. Why do we age? Well, if the answer is obvious to you, it's only because you've been led to believe that aging is some linear process you have no control over, and all of the so-called age-related diseases are an inevitability. You know, when you think of the baby boomer generation, you think of an aging population that is living longer relative to years, yet whose quality of life has not changed much more than their predecessors. Why is that? The sheer number of baby boomers living with prescription cocktails from statin drugs to beta blockers to lifelong intervention therapies like dialysis well, speaks volumes about their quality of life. Across America, 37 million people suffer from chronic kidney disease and more than 726,000 have end-stage renal disease. According to a Center for Disease Control report released in 2017, more than 100 million U.S. adults are now living with diabetes or pre-diabetes. There are nearly 100,000 Americans on the waiting list to receive a kidney transplant and kidney disease ranks as the ninth leading cause of death in America. Approximately 20% of all dollars spent on traditional Medicare, that's $114 billion a year, is spent to treat Americans with kidney disease. And this has nothing to do with aging. It has more to do with a changing emphasis on longevity by which a person becomes a lifelong patient versus the quality of one's life. Despite what you've been told, longevity and quality of life are not diametrically opposite realities. Indeed, they are two sides of the same coin. Yet nearly in every strip mall, you will likely notice a peculiar retail outlet called the Davida Dialysis Center. They don't sell clothing, discounted shoes, or groceries like all the other stores. In fact, they only serve the sick. And with a population barely tipping 100,000 people, there are two Davida Dialysis Centers in the city of Vacaville alone, which just a few years ago was ranked in the top five of Forbes magazine's healthiest cities in America. Now, I'm not mad at Davida for having an aggressive business model. They're simply taking advantage of a disturbing, disproportionate yet growing demographic of sick Americans. One in three, in fact. And whether you believe this trend is due to nature or nurture, it almost doesn't matter. The fact remains, people are living with chronic illnesses that only decades ago weren't household certainties. Last week, I shared with you part one of the remarkable testimony of a fascinating man named Wim Hof. This week, I want to delve a bit deeper into some of his amazing physical feats, whether being able to heat up ice cold water or navigating dangerous icy terrains and shorts when most other human beings would have succumbed to certain death. It's extraordinary. Well, how could that be? Is the human body and mind so remarkable that it can be impervious to those elements and forces that would normally kill us? An even more important question to ascertain is, is Mr. Hoff a human anomaly? And if he isn't, then is it possible for you to navigate this life illness-free? Now, I haven't had stomach aches, headaches, or any of the other aches that seem to habitually plague most people in decades. So I know it's possible. I know it's possible because I've had clients who were wheelchair bound, and I've seen them graduate from a wheelchair to a walker to walking on their own power after the medical professionals had sentenced them to a life in a wheelchair. Now, was that a miracle? Perhaps. But I, like Wim Hof, believe we humans have within us the power to walk in the miraculous and thus demonstrate that power through the quality of the life we choose to live. Now, listen carefully to part two of what Mr. Hoff has to say. I'll be back with my two cents thereafter. Today will be just another day unless you decide today that it won't be. It is Tuesday, August 20th, 2019. Let's flow. And now this needs to be implemented for those in need. And there are many, many in need. So that is so extraordinary. The fact I'm so glad that you were doing a brain scan while you're doing that because I imagine 
when I think about what you must be doing, I think about um, something being tense, something being hardened. And so when I've practiced your breathing, it's, it's a very active, intense like uh, drive. But hearing you talk about it as meditative, of tapping into the insular, of you know, activating deeper regions of your brain and not the prefrontal cortex, that paints like this whole other like emotional connection to have with what you're doing, um, which changes entirely how I approach what you're talking about, mm, which is yes. really interesting. Another thing is they say we are doing right now and we got it endorsed uh, through the John W. Brick uh, Mental Health Care Foundation. 1.2 million to endorse a study on the DNA in San Francisco with the top researchers over see there. See if, if you're changing DNA yes. or if you have a mutation we, that allows you a, to do this. A, a, DNA changes itself. It uh, prolongs in cell activity, cell division, which is a telomeres. The condition of the telomeres is about longevity and the quality of life. If it is not attacked by uh, inflamed uh, transcription factors, then the, D, uh, the genome expression is going to be just nice and right. And besides of that, uh, the protective proteins around the cell are then through the hormetic exercises mm. or the breathing you just mentioned, together with the cold showers, it is hormetic uh, uh, Well, let's stress. define hormetic for that people. Hormetic is like positive stress, yeah. conscious stress. Your neurology is inside that and it connects with your body the way nature meant it to be. And in the primordial state of our cells, the cells should be protected by proteins. But because of our comfort zone behavior, they are inactive. And thus the inflammatory in, uh, impulses through the transcription factors, just little assholes, uh, who go into the cell and they begin to mess up the telomeres, the longevity, the cell division, the condition thereof, and we live shorter and better, so less, and we are uh, becoming vulnerable for uh, the wrong genome expressions, and that causes diseases. Guys, this is really interesting. If this is really um, shaking down to hormesis, which said another way is a little bit of bad, does you a lot of good. Yes. And so you actually need something that stresses the system in a way that most people would think of as bad, yes. but it actually ends up being good. And this is where um, I, I'm jarred in the best way possible with what you were saying about it being this meditative experience for you, because I think of going in ice as brutally painful, of requiring all of my discipline and desire to battle through. Mm. And I, I wouldn't have thought of it as being something that I have to relax into of you know, really sort of releasing, letting go, relaxing, almost removing myself from the, certainly removing myself from the suffering of the pain. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious, are you, when you're doing this, and you've talked about dipping under the ice and going into this meditative state, and you've described it with these sound effects, mm -hmm. which I always found really interesting. But when you're going into that, do you feel the pain and divorce yourself from the suffering? Or do you literally not feel any discomfort? You feel anything, but you learn to let go. You follow the breath and thus the hormonal system, the endocrine system, which we have shown in scientific research, is really active within your command. And with that comes the adrenaline, the epinephrine, the opiates, and the cannabinoids. All right, now I have they a... They are very strong. Of a really, they're really strong painkillers, is what yes. you mean, right? Yes. So that's interesting. So you're saying that you're actually killing the pain by tapping into that system because you've kicked off all this neuropharmacology, basically. Yes. Okay, that's super interesting. What I want to know is when you're going into the meditative state, you know you've just been injected with um, the endotoxins. Yes. What are you visualizing? Like, what are you actually thinking when you're trying to get to adrenaline it's, or bone marrow or? I tell you, um, if you go into the, to the ice, you're really not thinking about your mortgage or your wife or this or that. You're not going to picnic. You feel, the focus will be on your feeling. How to get this feeling into adaptation and to overcome whatever is coming. And it goes directly. And I tell you, the, the cold has been my teacher. I just followed the teacher, the feeling, 
uh, learned to let go. Intuitively, I felt I want to do this. I did yoga, I did kung fu, I did all kinds of things, and and uh, uh, great. But the cold is really merciless but righteous. And I was ready to go in. I felt intuitively I want to go in because it has got something. I don't know what it is. And yes, I went in and I felt it. The connection was there beyond any word. And that's what I was looking for. This tapping into deeper parts of the brain, feeling pure energy, feeling power, innate capacitated power we have to deal with that. I was looking for that. And since then, I uh, went on and on and on and on. I did all these records and many more challenges. I did crazy stuff, really. Uh, sitting all the night in, in, in your shorts outside in freezing mm -hmm. temperatures and feel great. That is something, man. That is power. And I've been venturing and discovering more and more. And finally, I began to realize, but it's all in the mind. Oh, yes. So learning to let go in the right way, following your breath. The breath is able to uh, prime uh, the body and then your mind, the neurology of the mind. If I'm able to make my skin temperature not going down while being exposed to ice cold water, skin temperature, that's power. And that power is the same power we can learn to embrace and awaken. Uh, uh, in which we are able to tackle any stressor in the world. Any stressor emotionally and physically and mentally, whatever you come up, we are built to be able to oppose that, to get through and to learn and not to be afraid because we have the power of the mind. You can't imagine to what degree I want that to become real in my life. So I'm going to start pinning you down on some things so that I can walk away from this knowing. Please do. Um, okay, so it, it seems like there's two things to your method. Number one is the breath. So what I want to know is when you're breathing in the way that you're breathing, which there's a lot of great video on there that we'll link to in the show notes. So um, when you're breathing like that, why do you think that allows you to begin to reconnect to something that everyone will call the autonomic system, meaning that you don't have conscious control over it? How does that link it? Yes, uh, very simple. Uh, these breathing techniques I've learned to do in extreme cold. So they are extremely effective. Very soon I was able to stay and prolong my time in ice water feeling great. But is the breath just about oxygenating the tissues? Ox uh, oxygenating, not only to go past, in this case, uh, to go past the lymphatic knots, uh, which normally inhibits the, uh, the oxygen to go deeper. Now we found a way to go past these knots into the lymphatic system. And with that, you come into the depth of your body and making you able to alkalize your blood within a couple of minutes. And with that, a, when the uh, blood is the right pH degree, then suddenly the neurology of the mind, which is el like electricity, is able to run through on a subtle basis. How familiar are you with hyperbaric oxygen? Uh, n uh, not too much. I never did that. But so I know I, it uh, heals uh, infections yeah. and uh, skin problems and things. What we do is the same thing, but then uh, naturally. We do uh, uh, controlled hypoxia, like controlled high stage strain. Mm -hmm. We just did a study in the Andes uh, Mountains in South America on 4,500 meters. It's about uh, 14,000 feet. And they compared uh, Diamox, which is used for acute mountain sickness, mm -hmm. very strong medicine, uh, to the breathing. And the breathing uh, won. So the breathing is more effective on those heights and in those extremes than a medicine. Wow. And uh, th this, is what, uh, this is unknown. And we got eight more studies coming out. Hey man, we got the power to, uh, to be the alchemist within our body. That's the way nature meant it to be. Right. Another thing is, they say 20% of our brain is working. Fuck that, man. <laughs> it, it is 100%. And we got uh, the innate capacity to enter into any part of our brain. And now we have shown to get into the deepest 
And with that, we become the commanders of our own mind and body. So actually, we are mammals. We are about, you know, uh, we are built after millions of years uh, as mammals. Uh, if your geology is inside, the wiring and everything is inside, and three times the world's length is vascular systems uh, inside of us. Killer number one in our society is cardiovascular related. It's big time. And that is because we wear clothes. We are never being stim stimulated uh, through cold, warm, uh, and pressure. It's no longer there. So there is a mediocre state of our vascular uh, conditioning. And, that, uh, and for that, we take cold showers. Uh, then, There's uh, some shock to the system that does yes, something to the Yes, hormesis. Or, uh, we do it consciously. And with that, we connect even with the brain, with the vascular system all over. And it's amazing how simple it can be, how simple we can tech, tackle this serial killer, the cardiovascular related diseases. We can tackle it. A cold shower a day keeps the doctor away. I love that. So something that I didn't expect when I started Impact Theory is the number of people that stop me, the number of people that write to me and tell me that they're contemplating suicide. Ah, so we, we got so many people who, uh, who don't commit suicide because they found this. Mm. Because nobody wants not to live, but they don't know how to live. Right. And this will reactivates and resets their body to the way nature meant it to be. And that is to be happy, strong, and healthy. Yeah. Talk to me about your wife and how... This is the way I started. My wife jumped from an eight-story down in 95. Four children and I had no money, just there with four children. My children made me uh, survive and nature healed me. And that was the cold. Because in the cold, you shut up. And all this turmoil, the emotional confusion, the broken heart, it's all physical. It's all real. The cold is able to shut it up, shut it down and survive. And with that, I came slowly but surely in control over my emotions. And uh, now I'm able to make uh, people aware of that capacity, even without uh, cold showers and all those things. But that's where it came from. Now, I was powerless then with my wife, who was uh, schizophrenic and psychosis, that put all kinds of pills in, uh, injections, didn't work whatsoever. There I was powerless. But now I'm in power. I, uh, uh, in the subcurrent, I'm working now with those kids. Uh, they work with, with me and we get it spread this all over the world that we found a way how to deal with emotions, uh, with the cold, with the heat, with the stress. In the brain, in the body, we found it. And now uh, uh, I'm almost so, so far that I'm dealing uh, uh, with a new competitive study with Wayne State University in Michigan uh, on a competitive study on bipolar people. Within four days, I will make them have a absolute sense of control wherein they are able to redirect their brain uh, and balance uh, within uh, the, the out of balance hormonal uh, manic uh, depressions and all. And with that, uh, my circle is round from being powerless to power. And I'm a dropout from school. I'm teaching professors and doctors now all over the world. And they say, after seeing the results of me in the brain scans and the way I activate uh, parts of the uh, brain thought of impossible by humans, mm -hmm. they say, this is a transformational technique that will change mental health care. And we see it. The cold is my warm friend. Yes, the, the way we are schooled is to take on that autoimmune diseases, cancer, depression, and alike, and power, gaining power and being insensitive is normal. I think it is sick. And we got to stand up and show through scientific uh, uh, research that uh, no, uh, no speculation that it is not so. And it sounds like what you're saying is the thing that stops us all from that at a really like cellular level is inflammation. Yes. So the, the sort of general root cause, because you've talked about being able to alleviate symptoms of arthritis, even thrown in cancer, uh, because to you the root cause of all of that is inflammation. D uh, inflammation causing deregulation on cell level, in the DNA, in the genome expression. It's all the same thing. 
now we have learned to tap into the lymphatic system. We just finished this study. Within 20 minutes, alkalize the blood in the uh, lymphatic system, which is the deepest one, considered to be inaccessible, now is accessible. And it's actually the storage of garbage chemistry within our body. And now we know with these breathing techniques, how to get uh, past the nuts, get into the slight acidic state of the storage capacity of the lymphatic system and change it into becoming alkaline or cleanse it. When we're getting past the knots, so we're admittedly, for anybody watching, we're way out of my depth. So I'm going to be asking probing questions that are educated, but I fully understand I'm outside my depth here. But um, when you sleep, your brain actually um, shrinks because the inflammation goes down and allows certain, I'm going to use the word toxins, to be uh, flushed out of the brain, things like um, the amyloid plaques and things that can build up in somebody that ultimately will um, show signs of Alzheimer's. Do you think Whoa. that what's happening at the um, lymphatic level is a similar kind of reduction in inflammation caused by the breathing? Absolutely. Pulling the, the oxygen in. That, I mean, at least there's like an internal logic that I can wrap my head around, which would be immediately clear. It, it, it is paired with the parasympathetic activity which is done on the autonomic nervous system level. Now we have shown to get into the autonomic nervous system and to create both sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, nervous system activity at will. So uh, if you do the breathing before you go to sleep or if you do the cold showers, then you will sleep better. So cold shower a day keeps the doctor away. Yes, and it's good. All right, so for everybody that's about to embark on this journey, and I'll include myself in that, I want to go back to when you're 17. Yes. The ice water starts calling to you. And also, part of what makes this fascinating is you have an identical twin. Yes. So, one, it's fascinating that you guys took very divergent paths. So, if I understand right, you've begun to teach him your method. Yes. Um, but... When you're there at the water and it's calling to you, mm. what what is that? Like at 17, I know you'd been searching, searching for like, I need this, this, whatever this is. I need it all to make sense. I need to connect to a God or something to, to fill me up, to uh, let me connect to something bigger than myself. So you, yes. you have that calling. I don't know what, but it is there and it is inside of me and it's more than meets the eye and all that. And it made me at uh, uh, age of 12, uh, uh, study psychology and going into Hinduism, Buddhism, and all kinds of esoteric disciplines. And when I was 17, I, I just had this feeling. And my twin brother, who is identical, is not able to do, only after my training, to come up with the results. Mm. Because it's not genetical, it is trained. And so this one is able to be trained by anybody. Now here are my two cents and feel free to keep the change. The ongoing political debate over lower priced drugs infuriates me because the argument is a specious one at best. I'm not opposed to lower priced drugs, especially given the price gouging, downright theft and abject abuse of the elderly by the pharmaceutical industrial complex. Americans deserve better, particularly those Americans who are most vulnerable yet have more than paid their fair share or so-called debt to society like the elderly. My gripe is about the focus. The emphasis is seldom if ever on prevention. It's always on intervention if that. I suppose intervention is a necessary evil given the present landscape of American health. Still, the American people deserve better. To simply argue for lower priced drugs is like a man who is starving arguing against GMO foods. People who are starving don't typically argue over the nutritious value or health benefits of food. They only care if food is affordable or available. Look, you have within you the ability to determine your quality of life. You can relinquish your power of self-governance to the DaVita dialysis centers of the world and become a part of the one in three Americans expected to develop type 2 diabetes. Or you can choose to tap into your autonomous system through the choices you make. We are built to deal with any stress or pathogen in the environment. Our bodies are amazingly resilient, especially given all the chemical warfare we put them through. By the way, food is nothing more than chemical energy, so our choices regarding what we eat either enhance our health or distract from it. Either way, we are choosing a chemical therapy that puts us at war or on a path to a lifetime of peace and prosperity of health.
Dear friends, I wish above all things that you prosper just as your soul prospers. You've been listening to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio with your host, Tiaja. Until next week, as always, walk in health and peace.